The videos that we've been watching were for the construction of an underground garage. And it was a very efficient use of slurry walls or diaphragm walls because the diaphragm wall became the permanent exterior wall of the garage. And I would like to show you the details of how that kind of construction takes place. It's a multi-level structure and bear in mind these are just the very crude uh, sketches, nothing here is to scale. You would have to install supportive excavation wall on both sides of the structure and it's quite a deep excavation. It's about 60 or 70 feet deep. Now in addition to installing these two walls, the, you would have to brace from uh, one wall to the other or install tiebacks or some, some other means of supporting the side walls. So you can see how this would be quite a complicated excavation. Also because the width is quite large Bracing may not be feasible. You might actually have to install uh, tiebacks to anchor this wall. So there's a lot of expense here, a lot of effort required for the temporary support of excavation. Now because of all of those requirements, the contractor proposed using a slurry wall and leaving that in place as the permanent wall of the garage. Now this is terrific because you've basically eliminated the need for this temporary system to first support the sides of the excavation. You're putting in one system and it serves both purposes. It is the supportive excavation and it becomes the permanent wall of the garage. So you can see there's an immediate saving. But it gets even better than this. And now I want to talk to you about top-down construction. It's something everybody uh, vaguely knows about, but rarely gets to see. This garage was built using top-down construction. To begin with, the supportive excav excavation method was slurry walls or diaphragm walls. So that created the temporary support wall and the permanent wall for the finished structure. Nevertheless, as you excavated down, you would have to brace the slurry wall. But in this case, you excavate down only a, a shallow amount and you construct the roof slab of the garage. Now the roof slab of the garage becomes the brace for the side walls. Of course you leave an opening in it because you will then excavate through the opening to construct the next level. So we are literally working from the top down. So now you can excavate to construct the second level and you do that by working through the openings and of course you can put equipment down here to uh, to do, do the excavation and just lift the excavated material uh, out of the hole so this is uh, bracing the slurry wall it's the top brace if you like and when you place the concrete for this next floor, this becomes the next brace. And you can work your way down. What's happened here is really quite remarkable. You've eliminated a temporary exterior supportive excavation, and you've eliminated the interior bracing. Let me just um, go through this again. This is the conventional approach, if you like where you create an, a temporary wall. In this case, because of the water table, it was likely to be a, a steel sheet piling wall. 
and as you excavate down you have to install uh, bracing but because of the great width of this excavation chances are you would have installed uh, tiebacks as you go down now the contractor said let's not do that let's put in a slurry wall a diaphragm wall and that will become the permanent wall of the structure so you've eliminated the temporary wall and all of the bracing required and by building from the top down there is no bracing needed so this is uh, you do a shallow excavation here uh, just uh, sufficient to build this first slab and when that slab is cured you can excavate through the opening and go down and build the second slab again working through these openings now this is a schematic drawing there could be more than one opening and the openings would be there anyway this is a garage so to get from level to level there would be some kind of a ramp and, and the opening is really already provided for you. So this is a, a good summary view of what's going on. Two things are going on simultaneously. The temporary support of excavation wall has been eliminated by going to a diaphragm wall or a slurry wall and leaving that in place as the permanent sidewalls for the garage that in itself would have been a very significant saving but by then employing the uh, top-down construction you've eliminated all of the interior bracing so now you've used a slurry wall which is the most expensive of all of the supportive excavation methods but because of these two savings this becomes a very very cost-effective solution now in this drawing I've really oversimplified and there's an important feature that has been left out I want you to take a break from the lecture uh, go into the quiz area of the class and it will give you a chance to look at this and think about what is missing from this picture